All right, everybody, we did it. We got project off-grid upgrade completed. Uh, we got the old batteries out of here, the XI GNBs. We had about 14,000 pounds worth of them. We got those out of here and upgraded them with the Discover AES lithium iron phosphate battery. Um, so far, this is about my third system using these and hands down, these batteries have been working amazing. Um, working with the open loop platform, running the Discover with the Outback, this is system number two using that. And with all the monitoring that I have going on, they're, they're working very well as a lead acid replacement in an open loop platform. Um, that, that's a totally different system versus my Schneider system that's running closed loop with dynamic control. But as a lead acid replacement, adding these lithium iron phosphate batteries to work with this uh, hardware is working great. And one of the things that we're really looking for in these types of projects is really giving the homeowners the ability just to live like they're living on the grid with some constraints that they don't have unlimited power, but not having to have uh, water batteries to clean terminals, um, not having to worry about charging them up all the way every day. These things can operate on partial state of charge without any issues to the batteries. So that's one of the real key benefits to running the lithium iron phosphate. Now I've seen some videos come out recently comparing the um, uh, the iron Edison nickel iron batteries. Uh, and in that they were talking about lithium ion. But again, this is lithium iron phosphate. This is a much safer technology than lithium ion. Um, these batteries, we're gonna be doing some ballistic testing on them soon to see what really happens when you shoot them. They were talking about piercing the batteries and the fires that happen from them. Uh, we're gonna do in a controlled environment on my ranch, shoot them with some high ballistics and actually see what happens to these batteries. And is it really something that we need to worry about? Um, so far, I gotta say that working with these batteries, with the BMS that's integrated into it, it's been very reliable. Um, we have a lot of safety features. I'm able to monitor just the battery from home, the system from home. Um, we have a lot of controls running with these systems that we don't have necessarily with lead acid batteries. So again, we're hoping for, you know, by having that ability, uh, it, the ability to also catch errors if they're, you know, if they're happening, if we're not charging them up all the way, or if a bad cell is in there, we're able to kind of see that data ahead of time and kind of uh, cut, cut that off before we have any damage. So again, we replaced the 144 kilowatt hour uh, AGM battery bank with 20 about 20 kilowatt hours of lithium iron phosphate from from Discover. Um, we took and we paralleled all of those battery cables inside of a Flexware 1000. Uh, this is kind of my go-to battery combiner. Um, you can wire all three of these batteries together. You could uh, parallel them all and then run them right into the Outback GSLC. But for safety reasons and for uh, also the ability of adding extra breakers, I chose to use the Flexware 1000. I've actually used this on pretty much all of my lithium upgrades um, because I really prefer to breaker each battery or at least breaker each string. Um, I think that's a big safety consideration to add to it. So when I first did this system, uh, it was really, the inverters were Xantrex XW uh, Sinewave Pluses. Um, so along the way, one of the inverters died and we wound up replacing it with the Radian. So part of the project was removing all of that old hardware so that we could add the Outback GSLC. This allowed us just to utilize all of the, the factory made breakers, uh, two breakers for the power modules in each inverter, um, the bypass assembly, um, all the proper AC breakers, and really condense it. One of the things that we're also fortunate is that we have enough room to add another inverter um, if need be. And we'll just have to relocate some controls, but again, that's no big deal. Um, you can see in here, we have the Mate 3 controller for all the Outback hardware that connects Combox, which is actually taking all of the data that's gonna come from the Discover batteries and input it into the ZAN bus and expedite that to the Connect Insight portal. I'm gonna run these for a couple weeks in an open loop um, platform where the batteries have no communication with each other just to see how they're operating, um, trying to always learn more. And then the next step will be when we come back is to hook all the AE bus up and then uh, expedite everything to the web and then we're really gonna have a full level capability of monitoring. Um, stepping over this way, uh, these are actually the original charge controllers for the system. These are Outback MX-60s. Uh, they're going on 14 years old and they've been working great. Um, when I first built this, this was my first system that I ever did. It was, it's about 13 and a half years old right now. Um, one of the key considerations was that we have some 240 and 120 pumps and uh, meaning that the inverters at that time were 120 and you actually had to uh, use a stacking cable to get 240 volts. We actually did a bypass assembly in here so that we could run the well panel directly off the generator in the case of emergency. 
Um, now that we have a 240 split phase inverter with bypass, we kind of removed some of that stuff. We just simplified it and made this just a well panel. This is just a generator input panel, which also allows us to uh, feed another inverter again if we need to, um, keeping it all pretty simple. Uh, this is just, again, this is just a standard AC panel uh, feeding all the, the standard loads like you would a normal house. If I did this system now, um, the only thing that would be different is I would add a utility meter because I really just like basic uh, metering so that once a month somebody can write down what the total kilowatt hour usage is so we can data log it other than optics. Um, sometimes optics, uh, people have uh, remote internet, it doesn't always work, it just always records it, keeps everything super accurate. But again, one of the key features of this system really was making it so these homeowners um, didn't have to have a lot of involvement in it. Um, we're trying to go for a really safe, really reliable system. Uh, I can again remote monitor this like I do on most of my off-grid projects to make sure that everything's running good and, and they can live easy. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, we got one more round to go. Uh, just hooking up some comms and doing a, a little bit of other stuff. And then on that one, I'll give you guys kind of a tour of the rays up top and show you what the rest of this project has. But thanks for following.